Hello, this is Chris Wilkin in the Adventure Video on Flight Sim. Today is episode 2 of the full tutorial series in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 from a small Cessna 152 all the way up to a big dual engine jetliner flying IFR flights into big airports with air traffic control and all that fun stuff. But today is the second episode. I know I said we do one video a day, but I thought that we could do more than one video a day so we could get the content down to you guys. So, a lot of what we cover in this episode is going to be about the takeoff and the procedure to getting the aircraft from on the ground with the engine off to in the sky with the engine on, hopefully. Now, I want to preface this by saying I am not a flight instructor. I, this is not, you know, certified training. So, if you want uh, training and stuff, that's just, just a disclaimer. Contact a certified flight instructor in your area if you want accurate, up-to-date, and um, real-world experiences. I am a person who is at their desk filming a video do not use this as real world and training because you will die maybe unless i'm a good teacher <laughs> okay so today we're going to be talking about how to take off so we have to get the engine on don't we so a lot of what we cover in this video is going to be what is going to build off of what we covered in the last video so if you don't we got we covered where all the instruments do and what the buttons do so i'm not going to cover that in this video so it's going to be important for you guys to watch the other video and you want to if you want to follow along with the whole series so first thing we do is make sure everything is off the key being off is important so make sure that's off make sure it's pull, pulled out throttle out all that stuff everything looks good so what is step one so step one is actually a pre-flight briefing we have to figure out what we're doing so what we're going to look at first is the weather we are flying cloud airport it's the same airport we were last time this is my local airport i've gotten rid of all the uh, the traffic just because it's uh you know better frame rate so let's have a look here. So this is what's called a METAR. So Kilo Foxtrot Charlie Mike. We have to if you wanna you wanna learn the phonetic alphabet if you're gonna do this, um, if you're gonna you know fly and stuff, because it's important. I'm not gonna kinda teach you guys it's you know 26 letters, just memorize it. It's important. So Kilo Foxtrot Charlie Mike is the airport identifier. So all airports in America start with Kilo or K. And then FCM, Flying Cloud, you know, Airport. I don't know what the M's for really, but it's just the, that's the three letter code. Like, you know, if you're flying to LA, LAX, that'd be that, JFK. You just put a K in front of it in America. It's different in other countries, but that's how America works. So, Kilo Fox at Charlie Mike, that's Flying Cloud Airport. That's the time it was issued. And that's in Zulu time or um, the standard time, British, uh, the British time, the where the standard date line is. 21010 is the wind, and that's important for later. So that tells us the direction of the winds are 210, so that's the wind coming from about the south. South is 180. 10 statute miles, that means there's 10 miles of visibility. Clear skies. Temperature is 25. Dew point is 18. And then the altimeter is 2986, which is the pressure. And this is just some remarks. That's not important. And that just kind of has it decoded there. So. We're going to want to look at, knowing the winds are 210 at 10, we're going to want to choose a runway. So this is what's called a airport diagram. This shows up all the taxiways in the wind. So we're parked right here. The black are runways and the gray are taxiways. You see it says E, B, F, A. Those are the taxiways. So that's taxiway Alpha, taxiway Foxtrot, taxiway Bravo. And this is the runways. When we have runway 28 right, 10 left, 10 right, 28 left, 36, and 1. Eight. Those signify the direction that they are facing. So runway 18 is facing the south, 180. Runway 28, 280 is facing the west, or just about west. West is 270. So knowing the winds are coming out of 210, which runway is closest? So 280 is 70 degrees off. 180, 10 is just all the degrees off. But 18 is only 30 degrees off of 210. So that's going to be the one we want, because we're going to want to have a direct headwind, as much of a headwind as possible. So, knowing we're going to one eight is what we're going to use, and the altimeter, this is also important. You have to remember that. 2986 is the altimeter. So, what we're going to have a look at first. Some people, you might want to do this after start, but just for, uh, just, this is easier to do, we're going to want to do this before. Um, so this is the altimeter. We want to set its pressure. You want to set the pressure, so 2986 in this knob, and that'll calibrate our altitude for us. This is a, this altimeter uses pressure to de determine how high it is, so we have to set the local pressure. So 2986 is the pressure, and that's going to put our air airport elevation. Okay? 
So 2986 is set, 2986. Okay. So, next thing we're going to want to do is we are going to want to start up the aircraft. So I've removed the yoke just so it's easier to see all the buttons. First thing we do, battery master alternator. Wait for it to power up. See our fuel gauges come up. We're half fuel, which is more than we need for this takeoff. Next thing we're going to want to do, turn, off the strobe, turn on the strobe light. Just to let people know that we are, in fact, turned on. Our battery is on. We're getting ready to start up the aircraft. Give the engine some primes. We'll give it three primes. We're going to want to turn the fuel shutoff valve to on, just so fuel gets, can go into the engine. Give it one more prime. And then here's what we're going to do for the starting procedure. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the key, turn it to both. I'll, just, I'll tell you what the other positions do later. But for now, we're going to turn this to both. And for our starting procedure, we're going to flick it to start, hold it on start, and then slowly increase the mixture as the engine starts until we get to 100% mixture, and then we can release the throttle, the, release the uh, key rather, to both, and then the engine should be started up, and we should be looking for some positive RPMs, oil temperature, and oil pressure. We're going to crack the throttle open, so give it just a tiny bit of throttle, like a quarter inch, half inch forward, is what you're going to want to do. And when the engine gets up, we're going to want to give it a little bit of throttle and maintain 1,000 RPMs on the tachometer. Okay, so we're going to turn on the beacon light, just to let everyone know that we're starting the engine. In real life, you kind of open the window or the door and scream out clear prop, but we can't really do that because we can't open the window or a door, and I don't really want to scream. So we just yell clear prop just to tell everyone to move out of the way because we are starting our engine. So we're going to make sure the parking brake on or you're holding the brakes down. Any of those options work, and the brakes just work like car brakes, left brake, right brake. Cars don't usually have a left and a right brake, but planes do for each wheel, and then you want to push those down all the way. Are you ready? Okay, so hand down the mixture, and then we're going to start the engine now. All right, engine's on, full mixture. We've turned that out to start. Get up to 1,000 RPMs on the throttle. Oh, sorry about that. And that is the engine started up. Okay, so now we need to taxi out. Oh, that's not what I want, is it? Well. We are going to want to taxi out to the runway. Remember we said runway 18? Turn the taxi light on. Release your parking brake. And then we're going to want to just turn. Remember we have a left turning tendency, so if we don't give it any turn, it's going to go to the right. We turn using our rudder. See, we use the rudders, which control the nose wheel. The rudder is also controls the nose wheel steering. So that's how you turn the aircraft. And then we can just pull up to the uh, stop line here. This is the ramp area, so once we exit the ramp area, we're going to enter taxiway, and this is taxiway alpha, if you remember, to runway 18, which is right there. So we can go ahead and taxi right up to the runway. Pretty sure taxiway, the lights aren't usually there in real life, that's a bit of a bug. And they say this is taxiway delta, which it is definitely not, this is taxiway alpha. I'm going to go ahead and reset my view to right here, because I like this view better. So. What we're going to want to do while we're taxiing, do a bit of a brake check. So we're going to go left brake. We watch that move and that move. Right brake. You want to watch the turn coordinator and the uh, heading indicator move, which is all good, and the compass move. So both of our brakes work, and we can do a dual brake check, and that works too. It's not smart to do this with planes directly behind you. <laughs> so you're going to want to pull up here. So this is what's called the hold short line. Hold short line right here, and this indicates when you when you pass this, you've legally entered the runway. There's one at the other side. That means you've legally entered the runway. So you only want to be on a runway if you've been clearance to by air traffic control. We're not going to worry about air traffic control right now. That'll be for a future video. So this is runway 18. That says 10 left to 8 right. That is the incorrect sign. Normally that would say alpha and then 18 for the runway, but uh, that's just what you get with default scenery. So now we're going to do what's called the run-up. So the run-up is we're going to increase the throttle to 1,800 RPMs. 1,800 RPM. Watch the RPM up there. 1,800. 1,800 RPM. Make sure you have the brakes set for this. Okay, so now we're going to do what's called a magneto check. So we're going to take the key from both and we're going to move it to left which is going to turn off the right magneto, We're only running on the left magneto right now. So what that do is that does is that it'll decrease our RPM by just a little bit, and we don't want to make sure it doesn't decrease it by more than like 130 maybe. 
or else we'll need we'll have that means there's some clogging in the magneto. Okay, so it means we can go to the right magneto, make sure that one's okay. The drop in RPM was good. And we go back to both. Then we can pull the carb heat, make sure that drops the RPM as well, which it has. And we can push that back in. And now we can reduce the power back down to 1,000 RPMs. Okay. Now we have to take this transponder, move it to altitude. We really should have done that before we start a taxi, but it's essential to do before you take off. That just means air traffic controls can be able to see where you are and what way you're going. And this is just a transponder that helps them identify you. Just going to put 1200 in the code because we were a VFR, Visual Flight Rules Aircraft. And uh, we also want to check our engine instruments, which are green and green. We can do a static run up, which is where you just increase the throttle to 100%. And we want to push our yoke all the way forward. And we just want to make sure everything looks good. The aircraft is moving. It really shouldn't be moving. In, in, in real life, it doesn't move when you do that. But you should check to make sure the oil pressure and temperature. The oil pressure is a little low, but that should not be a problem. That's because we're idled. Make sure at 1,000 RPMs when we're idling. If you get too low, the engine could start running, running a little bit rough. So last thing I'm going to do before we take off is do a control check. So left, right, you can see the ailerons moving, and then ups and downs. And we don't do a rudder check because it's connected to the nose gear and be like trying to turn your car when you're not moving. It's not that good of an idea. Okay, so we're not supposed to be across the whole short line until we're ready to take off, but because the static run up went a little weird, we're going to do it anyway. So turn the landing light on, tax light off, nav light on. It's not night, we don't need it, but it's just good practice. So we're going to taxi on the runway, and now we're going to worry about takeoff. So what do we do when we take off? So we're going to make sure we give it a little bit of right rudder on the takeoff roll, because remember the left turning tendency, and it's only exaggerated at full power. So we're going to line up the aircraft, runway 18 on the center line, and then let's just go ahead and bring it to a stop. So remember our airspeed indicator shows us our speed, and we're going to want to be rotating 50 to 55 knots. It's always better to rotate a little bit later if you want to, just in case the airplane doesn't quite have enough lift yet. And, you know, just in case there's a little bit of wind or turbulence or something, you want to make sure you have a nice, good cushion of airspeed. So, we're going to pitch up at 55 knots, or 50 to 55, and then we're going to slowly climb out. And this, everything we do is nice and gentle here for the aircraft. If you do any jerky movements, stuff could go crazy, so we're not going to do that. We're going to want to, once we get in the air and safely climb away from the obstacles, would be those trees at the end of the runway, we're going to want to pitch to maintain 67 knots right there, which is known as VY, which is our best climb speed, which means we're going to get our best climb performance out of that if we're at that speed, which means, because we're going to want to get it out, out, you know, out of the way of ground, just in case you have an emergency, we don't want to be 50 feet above the ground, and, you know, we want to have time to work things out. We want to get clear of the ground, basically. We want to check our trim. We want our trim to be set to take off, so I can go ahead and trim up a little bit, actually. Or down, actually. Trim the nose down, so to take off position. So, that's about all we want to do now. Flaps, make sure they're up for a normal takeoff. Other takeoffs, you sometimes use flaps. If you have, like, a short runway or a grass runway, you use flaps. But for this one, flaps up. That's everything we need to do. So, we're going to release the brakes and slowly advance the power to full. Slowly, 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 there's full power. Okay. Waiting for the airspeed, not taking off until 55. Make sure we're steady on the center line. Airspeed's alive. There's 40, there's a 50, and I'm gonna hit 55 now. We're gonna slowly raise the notes, keep it centered. Give it a little bit of right rudder to keep that ball centered because we're in the left turning tendency, and then we're going to accelerate the aircraft to 67 knots, which we have right there, that 60, 70, 80, we want 67, and they want to just pitch to maintain that, pitch to maintain that. So we're just going to keep this thing straight. We have our artificial horizon. We can look at the real horizon too, because this is visual flight rules. Pitch to maintain that. We're starting to speed up a little bit, and these are just slow corrections, very slow corrections. See that we're in the air now. We're flying away from the airport. It's okay. Everything looks good now. I'm going to keep make everything straight. It's kind of hard to fly on the outside view, so you've kind of accelerated now. Okay, we're at 1,500 feet now. We're going to climb up to 2,000 feet. 
and we're going to want to make a turn to the west. So if we want to make a turn to the west, you want to make sure keep the plane coordinated. I'll make, get rid of the oak just so we can want see the turn coordinator, what that's called. And this shows our bank. So each white line represents 10 degrees of bank. So that's 10, 20, and then 30. That one's 60, but you know, whatever. <laughs> we want it, we're going to want to bank probably 10 to 20 degrees is good for the first turn. Nice and slow. Keep that. We can actually start to accelerate a little bit as we get a little bit higher up. Just can, you know, get a little more speed. And we want to actually have a slightly lower pitch just to see if we can just scan for traffic just in case there are some planes around. Okay. Maintaining that west heading, westerly heading, and then we can just climb her up to 2,000 feet. Okay, here we are, guys. So we're going to want to slowly bring that power back. 21 to 2,000 RPMs is a good level to main for. Aim for for a cruise. So we're going to want to level out right here at 2,000 feet. You can see the airport off in the distance there. I'm going to take a screenshot of that. Okay, so 2,000 feet. Probably should be watching what I'm doing. And we want to trim to just make sure we're trim, we're uh, not having to do very many controls. In real life, you really don't want to be applying your fingertips by this point. Just your fingertips on the yoke. Okay, now that we can do our after takeoff checklist, or checks, if you will, we're going to want to turn off the landing light and um, make sure the engine gauges are in the green, which they are. And then we want to lean the mixture out for cruise. So what you want to do is pull this back until the engine starts to run a little bit rough, which is there. Actually, I might have pulled it a little bit too far. So right about here is a good level. We want to increase the RPM just a little bit. So that's just to make sure we're more efficient and can get a little more power out of the engine. Okay, so we've successfully taken off and climbed to 2,000 feet. Now remember, um, the airport elevation is 1,000 feet, so we're really only 1,000 feet off the ground, but we're at 2,000 feet. That's our first takeoff completed. All right, next video we're going to talk about maneuvers, and then after that it's going to be landing. So I'd like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.